Here we are. Back for Here we are. right into it. Back uh, for more palette expanders. This is episode five. And episode um, five. it's pretty crazy how man. Time flies. We got uh, two cold meads today. Um, we have two mystery meads. The point of the show is us bringing mystery meads to one another. There's no we 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 discussed food allergies before. Yeah, we're good. Okay. There's no nothing. Should, nothing. On. Nothing should be concerning. Okay. Um, so we have two mystery meads, mm -hmm. and we're gonna open them up. We're gonna taste test them, try and figure out what each other brought, and go for it. So let's do I'm it. Hype. Let's I'm open hype. them up. So. Start with yours. Yeah, well, let's let's go and get some pours. Okay. Mine okay. is carbonated. Oh, okay. Is yours? It is, is it not. Just cold. It is not. It's let's, just chilled. Let's just hope that this doesn't explode. I have a tendency. When you asked me if I was bringing something chilled, I answered yes because this was already in the wine fridge. Uh huh. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily like intended to be chilled. It's very carbonated. When I, when I went hustling around looking for something to bring, uh, this presented itself. So a nice, just... uh, nice thick head on that. <laughs> yes, that's way carbonated. What the heck? <laughs> I was not expecting that amount of carbonation. I can smell it. I can smell it from here. It's potent. All right. This shouldn't be carbonated. <laughs> now, uh, that's probably vacuum pressure. <laughs> because um, there shouldn't be any way. It shouldn't be carbonated. <laughs> it's... I. Surely that's just vacuum pressure. Ooh, I like the color. Thank you. It's your Valheim color. It's a similar color, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't have a preference for how we start. Do you want to start with mine as a nose? Ta Let's start with yours because we we want to catch this while the the true, carbon dioxide true, true, true. is pumping out of there, right? Yep. It's been a hot minute since I've tried this one. Yeah. I have. I don't have many bottles of it left. I've saved one for this show. It is. It is fruity and sweet on the nose uh-huh yeah like there you can smell a sweetness so you're getting fruity notes yeah it's hard to identify what those are uh-huh it's a little bit cidery it's got a little bit of a banana kind of ester carrying around in there mm -hmm. i almost want to say malty when you first opened it up i thought it smelled malty like yeah a it's beer. pretty the like the a beer the aromatics on this are very strong like just from that bottle mm -hmm. not i don't always get like a strong aroma from things but this uh -huh. one definitely probably part of the co2 <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Out. pushing it up your nose but it was still still strong yeah no it's it's malty and it's fruit forward and it smells like it's going to be sweet mm -hmm. well tbd on that i guess but all right so let's go to yours i get a um uh, a berry aroma mm -hmm. a pinpointing it has a slight tartness of a raspberry but it also has still like warmth that you get from a blueberry, that br like mm -hmm. earthiness of blueberry, which for me, interestingly enough, um, unripe blueberries, I won't say they taste like raspberries, but the tartness you get from an, an unripe blueberry mm -hmm. can mimic a bright berry. Of Interesting. Sorts. So it's like a different yeah, perception of acid. It also has a some blackberry-ish. I've, I've done one blackberry mead before, so I don't have a lot of experience with the aromatics mm -hmm. of blackberry. Yeah. It is It is berry forward on yeah. the nose. I'll give you that. Regarding, like, honey, I don't get, like, a... Uh, it's very bright. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like this is a buckwheat or this is a um, mesquite, which has a mm -hmm. smokiness to mm -hmm. it, or even tupelo, which has that that side. I'm not getting that. It's, it feels more like a clover, wildflower. You, you can pick up the honey in here, though. Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, it smells floral. You, it's especially like, like if you sniff kind of down the back, uh -huh. down here, it's like, I mean, you're getting fruit up here, but whatever's kind of wafting off the back is definitely honey air. It's funny because that the combination of whatever honey this is, plus that the bright notes from the fruit are reminding me a little bit of that cotton candy-like feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do not believe this to be, contrary to last time we did this, to be a um, meadow foam meat. Okay. <laughs> Did not get that. Solid. Okay. Um, all right. Ready let's go for it. Them. Yeah, let's do it. Let's start with mine since, okay. since we started with it first. Mm, okay. This has changed dramatically. Wow. That is a lot of flavor. <laughs> yes. Interesting. This is... There's There are burnt notes and toffee notes. There's a pretty pronounced bitterness mm -hmm. that's a little bit aggressive at the beginning yeah but then as it like mellows across your your palate it uh -huh. kind of carries the flavor it's definitely a lot it's very it's a powerful 
it, not necessarily in a great way, a powerful amount of flavor. Yeah. Um, almost overwhelming to me, at least. There's a, a nice chew to this, too. Like, I mean, it is, yeah. it is especially if you swish it around a little mm -hmm. bit, it fills your mouth and it hangs around. It's right. leggy. It is. Uh, Got that. It's, it's pretty thick. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... It's, it's 3C thick. <laughs> it's, yeah, no, it's... <laughs> It has, I mean, I, I could, I could probably cut through this with a butter knife. Yeah. Like, and it's. Uh, to me, the, the, um, fruitiness is way more apparent on the nose. The actual taste of it is everything yeah. you're describing. It's, it's not fruit forward. Yeah. No, the nose and the palate are two very different experiences and not necessarily in a disparate way. Yeah. It's, I think it, it provides a more kind of holistic experience because you're uh -huh. experiencing things here and there and in here and then the, the, the swallow and exhale. Interesting. If just on the nose of this, I would have guessed that it's some kind of like Boche sizer type uh -huh. situation, but tasting it, <laughs> I, I only kind of get like a Boche braggity kind of, yeah. of thing going on. It's got just a bit of heat to it too. Like yes. alcohol heat. Yes. And not in a bad way, not like a, ooh, it needs to sit around, but definitely in a way where you're like, this is an alcoholic beverage for yeah. adults, <laughs> not uh, not some cream soda. Yes, this is not this is not something, not your uh, hard root beer <laughs> or your right. seltzer. <laughs> right, right, interesting. Okay. Well, let's go to yours. Okay. It's going to be a, a different it definitely experience. Definitely a big change, for yeah. sure. But I feel like the progression is good, the way we went. I agree. And I haven't even tasted this yet. The berry, um, it, it's the berry side of it. Ooh, it has like an elderberry side to mm. me now that I'm picking up. Which I always, I don't know how you describe an elderberry, but I imagine it's like a dirty blueberry. That's what my... It's a bit medicinal, Yeah, I think. Um, and I, I a little bit see what you're saying there. Um, the body on this is nice. It, uh, the tannin... Is not it's not clinging in a tart way, but mm -hmm. your your tannic value, I'm assuming coming from skins, has ma makes this also thick in its own way. Mm -hmm. um, like this, I feel like has thickness from carbonation, from alcohol, from some other things. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. I feel like has a lot of the tannins from the fruit skins if mm. if you fermented on them. Mm. Um, I don't know that juice necessarily <laughs> like juicing things adds the tannin. Mm -hmm. And so, what is that? Is it a, a, a tannin flavor profile, or is it only a mouthfeel type of situation? Um, are you getting astringency, or are you just getting that, like, legginess and that, this that is tendency the legginess. to hang around? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting that. I mean, the, the well, I'll say it's, the, it's hard to, to differentiate, differentiate the two because the berry taste is pretty overwhelmingly strong. I get honey character, that high floral... Mm -hmm. side and also had some warmth from it but the the berry is there on the nose that i get that raspberry get the tart berry this is where i'm getting warm mm -hmm. more blueberry more elderberry um, esque notes i i would if i had to use one word to describe this it would be jammy yes it's almost like you know like when you go to like like a, a buffet and they give you those little jam packets mm. if you were just to like yes yeah it does have that, that viscosity of it mm -hmm. um that's yeah i definitely see that it makes it feel like booziness wise it doesn't feel hot it feels yeah. very well tempered um Did you say this has got some age on it uh, it feels like it has at least a little bit of age i'm not hint maybe it's coming off of this <laughs> that, you know the the drastic two sides of very yeah. boozy to yeah. assumedly not as boozy but it does feel like it is smoother. Okay. Now, is that age or lower ABV? <laughs> or technique? Yes. Yeah. I like this one a lot. Mm -hmm. I like both of them, but they're, I like them both in very distinctly different ways. Yeah. No, this one's great. I would say, I honestly am struggling to pinpoint any berry specific because I'm getting notes of each one. Mm -hmm. So... Which, of course, it's easy to throw off the mixed berry and say, hey, this is just a mixed berry mead. Mm -hmm. But I do want to pinpoint and try to figure out one. I'm having okay. a little hard time doing that. I, and I, I, I think I may know why that is. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious to see what you what you hone in on with that. Hmm. I need a moment. Okay. 
Take take a moment. I'll talk about how great Anthem Brewery yes. is here in Oklahoma City. I haven't had. I'm going through the list of berries. I haven't had a lot of strawberry meats okay. before, so I obviously know what strawberry tastes like post fermentation. <laughs> things change. I mean, that's just the truth. Is it, it fruit yeah. changes drastically after? I don't know about strawberry. The more time I sit with this, the blueberry side fades, and I get more bright berry. So this berry wheel could be strawberry, or I don't believe it's raspberry, because that's that's too bright. I don't know what the in-between, like, hmm. in the hierarchy of berries, yeah. you know, we got... This is your next tier list video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> raspberries up here, and then whatever, elderberries down here yeah. as, as bright and dark. So somewhere in that middle realm, and that could just be time and age and honey character. I'm going to go ahead and, and just... Throw it out. It's either it's either a hybrid of strawberry and like blueberry, okay, or it's I say or this feels like a cop out, but um, or it is running into that semi mixed berry realm. I don't get any other uh, predominant flavors like spices or anything like that. Okay, so some sort of mellow mel, berry fruit mellow mel. Okay, do you want to take a shot at ABV? I'm gonna guess between. I mean, the body of it, it could be deceptive, but it feels like it's between like 9 to 11% ABV. Okay. But it is very smooth, so that makes me think that time has been a friend. If it's lower ABV, then that's scary, because this would be something you could down like. So what what is your, you, you think it's blueberry, strawberry? Yeah, somewhere in that, in that realm, that middle ground of not bright, not super bright, not super dark. Okay. Very. Okay. Which I wish I could tell you that I get, I'm getting one specific one, but my palate and is not yet expanded. <laughs> we're getting there. Maybe by episode 10. Yeah, well. Do you have any guesses at Honey Varietal? Hmm. I'm going to have to look this one up to make sure I don't lead you astray. To I it. don't get any extreme notes. Okay. Which it would be unfortunate. It is unfortunate if it's something of wild variety. Um. My thought could be the blueberry honey I have has high bright fruit notes that mm -hmm. could be mixed in that also attributes to blueberry berry taste. So I'm gonna go with that. Okay. Um, I feel like I feel like you would try and mix a nicer honey with something like this. So rather than just a, a straight up clover, nothing wrong with clover, but okay, 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 interesting. I mean it. Okay, I I, I'm, I I pulled up the thing so I can I can confirm exactly what what I did here. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I have to yeah, no, I have to. to dive back in here real quick. <laughs> See, my problem with this show is I always forget to like look at back at my notes before I go oh, over yeah. here. <laughs> so I'm always no, like, I didn't. I luckily my label what? has what all my mean? stuff on it, so I I just I didn't even look at it before. So this is definitely sweet, mm -hmm. which makes me curious at why. Or, or at how you achieve sweetness with carbonation, but I'm gonna guess it's because there are caramelized sugars in here that can. I will give you one hint. It is pre erythritol. Pre erythritol. I I presumed since you said that it's been kicking around here for a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna guess that this is. See, I don't pick up any hops in here. Mm -hmm. But I want to guess that it's like a Boche Braggot, unhopped. There's just not, like, a lot of malt character in there. Okay, I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> this is a carbonated, bottle-conditioned Boche with lactose added to it. Mm, okay. Final answer. All right, all right. So, we'll start with mine. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to, instead of me telling you about it, I'm going to unwrap this, and I'm going to let you read the label. I'm terrified. Now. Not terrified, just... Oh, no. Kiwi blossom oh, honey. No. Let's see how much I lose of this. Oh, I think I've had well, this. Well, there's one the bottom. Before. There's the bottom of it. This is all you need. Actually, I think I tried this one time on a Twitch stream and said it I couldn't I couldn't take another drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's not I, If uh, it's the same one. It, I just I recognize does this. Does it have the, the, the percent color. on there? It, this is in between uh, 15 and 17%. Yeah, it tastes like it. Um not in a bad way. I mean, it's it's mellowed a lot. I forgot to take a photo of it before, but interesting. It's the yeah. watermelon mead. It's one my first attempt at it. Now here's my what learning. The hell? What I learned from it. I used the flavoring. I yeah. put it in the primary, I believe, and it fermented out. And I also just put a ton of honey in there, and uh -huh. so it was just a bombshell. 
and the watermelon flavor got overwhelmed. I didn't add any more to try and, and make it any stronger. Okay. And I also didn't back sweeten to, to pronounce that. So it's just like not so watermelon. Wh why is it carbonated? Um, I don't remember if that was a fluke or if that was an intentional thing. I, <laughs> I mean, believe it was it's, intentional. If it's that high of ABV, achieving bottle conditioning sometimes is a roll of the dice. I believe that it was, I think, I want to say it was intentional, but I don't, I don't recall. This has been a long time. This was 2019. This was two years ago. Well, when it comes to it being a watermelon mead, this is a poorly executed watermelon mead. I have a, what's funny is I just put out a video today about my watermelon Dead. mead. That's a not eight or 17%, uh, but 7%. The uh, session no, mead, right? Yeah. That is much more watermelony than this one. I thought it'd be interesting. So interesting. So most of this flavor then comes from your yeast and your avocado blossom. Yes. Honey, which is the roastiness here. that you talked about. That's that mm -hmm. moche. That's mm -hmm. all of that. Like you, you were spot on with that. The, the, the curveball I threw, curveball I threw you was the um, flavoring being yeah. not super strong. Uh huh. Um, even myself tasting it, knowing what it is, I was like, oh, I'm not but this was raw it. honey to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. God, avocado blossom honey is interesting. I've, I don't think I've ever brewed with it. I've tasted it several times, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think I've ever brewed it. Makes great both shapes. I'll say that. I can imagine. <laughs> I, it's, it's, it seems like it's kind of built for that. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Let me, let me, we're going to pause here yeah. for a second. <laughs> All right. So you were right with the blueberry. Okay. So this was, as indicated by the cap, my second Valheim mead. Oh. This is the so it's one. funny that I said that Valheim color. Yeah, I know. I was like, huh? <laughs> uh, this was done with a quart of blueberry juice. Okay. And two quarts of, it was like a juicy juice apple raspberry. Okay, so, so you they're... did get the raspberry, but what's interesting is you're getting some of that those cidery notes in there yeah. from the apple juice too, mm -hmm. which I think is what's obfuscating what that berry profile looks like. Yes. For you. Yeah. Uh, and then this used, uh, I believe, gallberry honey. Mm -hmm. Go back and look at that. But it was it was a relatively neutral honey. Huh. So nothing, nothing. Big it's really, I mean, strong and boisterous. Just I think this one's really refreshing. Yeah. What's the ABV? It's nearly fifteen percent. Okay. And this is three months old. Wow. That's it's the two meads you brought that have been the Valheim meads have been very impressive because the first one took like three weeks to make, right? Or went yeah, from, it was in the bottle in six days. Yeah, like that one's super easy, <laughs> super good. This one, fifteen percent in this smooth, it's very impressive. That's hard to achieve because um, I don't believe that you have to let a mead age a year before you drink it. Obviously, this is a testament to it, three months. But you do have to give it a little time, mm -hmm. and generally speaking, if you have good practice, you've done. All the right things it will age better faster mm -hmm. and if you achieve balance yes so uh the tannin in this was actually dandelion root mm -hmm. that i dug up from my backyard dried mm -hmm. out roasted and added okay and i really like like i almost want to if i'm going to do this again double the amount of dandelion root mm -hmm. to get even more of that roasty richness yeah but like you said it provides a nice like mouth coating tannin mm -hmm. that carries the fruit flavors around really well it's not an ingredient I've really worked with much, but I'm starting to buy into it. I think it's great. I'm, I'm mega impressed with this and the other Valheim one. So we, there are videos <laughs> for both. I think there's a video for mine at least. I know there's for sure a video for this one, um, for BCs. So you can go check those out below. You probably saw some clips of those uh, in the process, but very, very different, very different. <laughs> results. And I'm great with that. Um, I, I don't hate either of these at all. Yeah. Like, I, I know I, I'm really proud of my <laughs> baby here. But this one, with that carbonation and that richness, and now knowing that it's basically a traditional avocado bar. So, yeah, essentially, yes. Um, it's got a lot of interesting character that's worth exploring. And I, uh, I encourage you, we encourage you, I think, to not only try these recipes if you're interested, but also to um, try any recipe you, recipe you find for a mead online. Um, of course, we want to promote ours, but the most important thing for you to do is to go and make mead, and as this show is uh, created, to also go and taste mead, whether that be commercially or personally, the stuff you've made or what friends have made. Mm -hmm. um, taste stuff, because that's how you develop your palate. That's what we're doing here, and you should be doing that at home. That's my note. I agree, 100%.
Um, we'll be back very soon with even more Palette Expanders. Pretty and uh, yeah, I'm excited for that. All right. Bottoms up. Cheers. Cheers.